Frederick Lanchester was a polymath. He produced over 400 inventions, many of which were patented, and they ranged far and wide. Many are still in use today. Uh, just as an example, colour photography, radio and sound equipment, bicycle manufacture, and even airframe tents and exhibition centres. Frederick Lanchester came to Coventry in 1909 to work for the Daimler Motor Company of Radford in Coventry. He stayed there as technical designer and consultant for 20 years. He was a problem solver, a serial problem solver. He, you'd see a problem and come up with something new, something unique to solve that problem. Um, when you see some of his designs from the 1890s, especially on the aeronautical side, um, they look like modern drones, things that have come in only in the last sort of, 10 to 15 years. So um, he could see things way ahead of his time. I think it's really valuable to archive uh, somebody like Fred Lanchester's work because uh, many of the things he did were for the first time, so they were quite unique um, developments. Um, and also, we still think there's things to learn from the archives. Frederick Lanchester's archive was gifted to Coventry University and it was kept downstairs in an office in some boxes and it was really interesting but hardly anybody could get to see it and we were worried that it was going to decay so we looked at ways of how we could preserve the archive and make it available to other people. So the process of setting up the archive space that we're sat in today uh, actually started several years before we physically began to build this space. So the first step was to uh, make an application to the Heritage Lottery Fund, which they accepted, to do a study of what this space could be like. But the first things that we did was look at uh, these thousands of pages of information that we had. How could we best represent Fred's story in this space? To me it was a bit of a light bulb moment, so from small boxes of papers and notebooks uh, we created this project and I knew that if we were using digital technology and some, some new technology in uh, AR at the time and games then we could involve a much wider audience. When we got together uh, to put this project one thing that uh, resonated very clearly in our heads, we're not here to put uh, tech for the sake of putting tech together. But it was very essential for us to take a stop and actually think, um, what are the real problems that this technology is going to solve for the museum and uh, heritage sites? And uh, this is where every decision became very critical for us. Augmented reality is the process of superimposing digital content on top of a real-world physical objects. Augmented reality was kind of a no-brainer for this project. Um, Lanchester's uh, archive has just like so many images, blueprints and designs and Sometimes it's difficult when you just have a blueprint in front of you to kind of visualize what it look, would have looked like in real life. Um, so all this content that he had uh, just made perfect sense to kind of get recognized by AR technology and to bring it to life. We wanted to make it fun and relevant to children and people of all ages who are interested in games. So we took his inventions and we created these games that make it fun to learn about what he did without people just telling them what he did. Gamification is a really useful technique to use when you're dealing with quite complex subject matter. 
automotive engineering, aerodynamics, you know, gearbox ratios. So using games really helped us in, you know, engage audiences with that kind of subject matter and explain it far better. The VR was an add-on really to the project because technology was moving on and we knew that uh, virtual reality was very important to immerse people that we, we experimented with that in a way that was really successful. This time we decided to take the approach of um, almost taking the Lanchester Interactive Archive from Coventry University and allowing you to experience a similar thing at home. We recreated Lanchester's workshop in full 3D and kind of used virtual reality to allow people to kind of walk around that workshop. And we had like all the different types of exhibits. Even Frederick Lanchester would love this technology, I'm sure. And he would love to be able to play with a virtual reality and augmented reality. And if he was here today, I think he'd be using it in his inventions and he'd be using it to test things out. But actually, the project has gone on from strength to strength and is still, we're still creating, we're still doing new things with the Lanchester Interactive Archive. The archive has been taken out to so many places, to so many schools, and is still doing that. I think the addition of the pop-up, um, particularly the blueprint pop-up, was, uh, was a great addition to the project. The outreach activities that we have, um, we've started to engage in a wide range of, of uh, audiences, and that ranges from large uh, civic um, events like the Godiva Festival, where we might see a throughput of you know, several thousand people uh, across a weekend, um, right through to the smaller bespoke um, organisations and community groups that require a one, more of a one-to-one -one, uh, directing and engagement. I think the sustainability of this project will go on and on. Um, there's a lot of love for this project, particularly in the university and in Coventry itself, because they can see the benefits of this in the community, the benefits of it for the students, and the benefits of it for Coventry as a whole. So to me that was something that I think Frederick Lanchester is this brilliant polymath and creative person would have really liked. I think if he was looking down on us now he would say that's perfect.